We're so thankful to have you uh, at our meeting today at the Apost International Apostolic House of Prayer. Where is that house of prayer? It's in our hearts. And uh, we're, we're here today with a handful of people uh, at this location, but we're talking to a number of different people across the world that are listening in on this, and I hope you will gain something today that will be a blessing and a benefit to you. Last time we talked about suffering, and we know that there are some that are listening to this uh, video that are in going through suffering, and we talked about that we need to look up and be encouraged because soon the coming of the Lord is going to be upon us and you have a crown of life prepared for you if you're living for Jesus Christ uh, that you will be glad to receive when he comes again. We're going to talk today about a, something that the Lord has directed me to share and it's all along this same lines. How do you deal with people that don't understand your faith in God. Do you realize Jesus in John 13, verse 31 through 35, shared a very important principle that was the foundational principle of all that he did? And it happened that he was telling this principle at a time he had just been betrayed by the man who would actually bring on his death, Judas Iscariot. Judas had left uh, the scene at this particular juncture in John chapter 13, and Jesus is telling the rest of his disciples these words. When therefore he was gone out, who? That was Judas. Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him, and God shall glorify him in himself, and straightway shall he glorify him. Little children, yet a little while, and I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said to the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. Now, So now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, even as, ye have, as I have loved you, ye also, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. What a strange time for Jesus to bring up this important principle. Right after being betrayed, right after the events that he knew were going to bring about his death, his crucifixion, and of course eventually he knew as well that he would be resurrected from the dead. I believe that with all my heart. He knew that. But he, he was concerned that these others around him saw this action as a time of his forgiveness for the one that had done him wrong. So he instructed them to love one another at this crucial time in his life. You may be in a situation today, friend, where you are struggling with the actions of other people. You're disappointed in the way you've been treated. You're, you're hurt by something someone has said or the way that somebody has acted towards you. They may have told a lie on you. They may have uh, mistreated you very deeply. But I say today, forgive those people. Love them. Pray for them. They despitefully use you just like the Bible says for us to do. And there'll be a freedom that comes in your life. There'll be, a, there'll be a deliverance that comes in your life. God will honor that as you forgive them. Uh, I tell people that I have learned not to hold them accountable for it. Oh, they say, how can you say such a thing? If somebody mistreats you, don't you need to hold them accountable for it? Don't you need to believe they're going to have to pay the worst thing they could possibly pay for their actions, for mistreating you and so, or somebody else? I say, let God handle it. Let God deal with it. Forgive them. Love them. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. God wants you and I to be free. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. He's saying let your motive for everything you do be love and serving another person, another people. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. 
We've, we, if we will learn the, me, the meaning of what Jesus is saying, to love one another is the fulfillment of all that he's asked us to do. We'll be happy. We'll be free. God will give us a great blessing in our life if we'll learn this truth. One of my favorite scriptures, and I know others have enjoyed this as well, it means so much, uh, is found in 1 Corinthians 13. And I think it's worthwhile to do the, to read the whole thing together. Uh, maybe this will be a blessing to you. The, the word of the Lord is going to accomplish something in your life today as a result of you believing the words that are given to us in the scripture. As your faith is mixed with this word, God will create a blessing, a deliverance for you, a liberty from a problem that you've gone through in the past. How about it? Will you believe the Lord with me as we read this scripture? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is pretty important according to this scripture, isn't it? The first thing uh, of importance. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is per patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. That's how we can tell if we're really loving somebody or not is what is our attitude in the process? Are we impatient? We want things to go right now for our benefit and our way? Are we being boastful, bragging about what we're doing or looking for self-glory and what God's doing in our life? Are we arrogant, lifted up, high, mighty, because we've got some kind of uh, connection with God that somebody doesn't have? Or rude? Oh, so many Christian people think that it's all right to... Uh, be haughty because and, and rude because they've got insight. Oh my, no. The other day, Jesus blessed me with a word for somebody uh, to tell them, if you want to step up to the next level, come down here where I'm at. Jesus himself said he was meek and lowly. And he was that way so that he could teach us to be just like him. So that we could be honored. Because the Bible lets us to know that who he humbles or who humbles themselves are going to be lifted up in him. If you want to be lifted up in the Lord, you've got to find this together with us, that we're to be humble before the Lord. Seek the Lord. Commit to him and, be, and humble ourselves before him. So if, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, the scripture says, humbling ourselves is very important. It does not insist on its own way, the Bible continues to say. It is not irritable or resentful. Do you know there's a lot of people that think that it's all right to be holy, uh, 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 irritable if you're holy? Oh, I say you can't be both. You can't have love and be irritable. You can't resent and have love. If you've got these things in your heart, wake up. And admit the problem you've got. You've got a problem if these things are in there. But the Bible says, love rejoices in the truth. Rejoices in the truth. That means when I discover something about my nature that's not according to, to God's word, I need to be thankful. I need to open myself to change. I need to believe God to do something in my heart to help me to be a better person. I need to be looking for him to help me before I'm looking for him to help somebody else to change. Sometimes we're so busy praying for somebody else to be changed that we miss the benefit of asking God to do it for us. And it's really us that needs to change all along. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I don't believe that love believes all things in the sense that he just opens up his heart to any doctrine or, or wind of idea. I don't think that's what that's saying. I, be, I believe that we need to be open and positive about all things of God. It bears all things. It's patient. It's long-suffering. 
it can go through trouble. A pastor friend of mine always used to say, anybody that loves God uh, can go through something for a year <laughs> before it changes. Be patient is really what he was saying. Be patient. Uh, it hopes all things. It hopes for the best, looks for the best, encourages others to do the same thing. And it, of course, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, there's going to be a time they come to an end, the Bible tells us. As for tongues, they're going to cease one day. As for knowledge, it's going to come to an end. And it goes on uh, to tell us uh, about those days. I'm so thankful today that God has called us to love one another. One of my favorite scriptures, in addition, is found in Romans 13, verse 8 through 10. It says, no, oh, oh, no man, or oh, no one, anything, except to love one another. I owe you to love you. That's what I uh, owe you. I'm supposed to love you. I owe the Lord this debt to love you. Now, who do you owe to love? Who is it? Who are you indebted to? Uh, if you're indebted to the Lord, you also are are indebted to love even the people that are hardest to love. They say the person that's uh, hardest to love is often the one that needs it the most. So uh, we need to love one another, the Bible says. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. If you and I have a desire to fulfill the will of God in our life, the Bible tells us how to do it. <laughs> Love one another and you will fulfill that law and that desire of God. The commandment, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, or any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love. Boy, that's important, isn't it? We thank you so much for attending our Bible study today. Tell somebody else about the website. We encourage you to, to not be discouraged. We uh, are thankful. We appreciate any comments you'd send along the way. And we thank you so much for being a part of our message today.